Last year, my wife, Marie, went to Morocco because one of her best friends was getting married there. I had no objections to the trip, since Morocco isn't really known for its radicalism. Marie was wondering what she should wear. I said, you wear whatever the locals tell you will keep you from getting raped. She ended up wearing a kind of scarf and a hat. Well, no more trips to Morocco, because the jihadis of Morocco like to chop women's heads off. Every time you think these jihadis can't possibly get any lower in their efforts to earn their virgins from that cosmic sex trafficker they worship, they start chopping off the heads of female college students on a camping trip. Hacking up college students on a camping trip. You'd think these guys got their playbook from Jason Voorhees. But it turns out they've got something much better than slasher films to inspire them. They've got a slasher prophet who really liked chopping people's heads off. And since the ultimate slasher prophet is also the perfect role model in the Quran, the jihadis who imitate him, far from being ashamed of their hacking sprees, are so proud of their devotion to the divine pimp they worship and the slasher prophet they strive to emulate, that they even record their attacks and post the videos on the internet. Now, think about this. If you were to call up a few of your friends and say, Hey, I have an idea. Let's go chop off the heads of some college students on a camping trip. How are your friends going to respond? I'm guessing they're going to tell you that you're insane. But the murders in Morocco were a team effort. The two women were on a hiking trip camping in Morocco's Atlas Mountains when they were killed. They've been identified as Louisa Vestriger Jespersen from Denmark and Marin Ulland from Norway. Their bodies were apparently discovered by two French hikers. Moroccan authorities have arrested four suspects in the city of Marrakesh. Uh, they were reportedly found in possession of knives. And Morocco's general prosecutor has confirmed that a video in which those suspects swear allegiance to ISIS and threaten to carry out attacks is authentic. So when one of these jihadis said, hey, I have an idea, let's go chop off the heads of some college students on a camping trip, why did his fellow jihadis go along with his plan instead of telling him that slaughtering tourists is wrong? They went along with his plan because it's extremely easy to justify, given what Allah and Muhammad said in Islam's most trusted sources. In Surah 5, verse 33 of the Quran, Allah declares, The recompense of those who wage war against Allah and his messenger, and do mischief in the land, is only that they shall be killed, or crucified, or their hands and their feet be cut off from opposite sides, or be exiled from the land. That is their disgrace in this world, and a great torment is theirs in the hereafter. Here we have penalties for the vague crime of doing mischief in a Muslim land. If you do mischief in a Muslim land, Muslims are supposed to kill you or crucify you, or for lesser crimes, chop off body parts or exile you. So what counts as mischief? Lots of things. Apostasy, preaching a religion other than Islam, adultery, becoming too westernized, things like that. If you violate Sharia, you're making mischief. By opposing Sharia, you've declared war on Allah, and you have to pay. But how had the two young women, who were just butchered by jihadis, made mischief or waged war against Allah? Let's think about this. The jihadis who killed the two female college students have pledged allegiance to ISIS. Now, according to Islamic teachings, not according to your opinion, according to Islamic teachings, have Western nations made mischief in Muslim countries? Have they stood in the way of ISIS? Have they waged war against Allah by opposing the Caliphate? Of course they have. And according to Surah 5, verse 33 of the Quran, what's the penalty for this mischief-making? Death. Among the nations that have joined the global coalition to defeat ISIS, i.e. nations that 
have committed themselves to the goals of eliminating the threat posed by ISIS and have already contributed in various capacities to the effort to combat ISIS, we have Denmark and Norway. So, according to Islam, have Denmark and Norway waged war against Allah or made mischief in a Muslim land? Absolutely. What does this have to do with ordinary citizens of Denmark and Norway, such as college students camping in Morocco? Well, in Sunan ibn Majah 2759 and Sahih al-Bukhari 2843, Muhammad said that the people who support or equip soldiers will receive the same reward as the soldiers. In other words, if person A is doing something, but he's being funded to do it by person B, then person B is equally responsible for what person A does. So, if Western governments join a coalition to combat ISIS, the people who support and fund these governments are to receive the same penalty. What's the penalty for making mischief in a Muslim land? Death. Who's responsible for the governments that are making mischief in Muslim lands? the ordinary citizens who fund these governments through taxes. That's why a jihadi in Morocco can look at two young tourists from Denmark and Norway and say to himself, these young women are part of the plot to overthrow the caliphate. And it's why this jihadi can then go to his jihadi friends and say, we have to kill these women in order to show everyone else in their countries that making mischief in Muslim lands will be met with slaughter. It's also why these jihadis can be proud of their work and post the videos on social media the way a proud parent posts her son's report card on a refrigerator. Are we understanding Islam yet? Or do I need to keep going? Let me know in the comments section.